Hello and welcome everyone to the BNB Game of the Week. I'm Tyler Steinberg alongside my partner Jared Broxmeyer and what is going to be a big game here today. We have the Mepham Pirates up against Jericho here in what is going to be a very, very big game here. Jared, what do you think are some teams both these teams two things both these teams are gonna have to do in order to win? I think Mepham's really gonna have to win face offs and gain possession off of that, and I think Jericho's gonna need to have good goaltending. Yeah, definitely. As we see here, both teams coming in. Pirates with a 2-3 and three conference record. Jericho, though, has had a lot more games played this way point in the season. Still 3-3 three and three record when it comes to conference, but that 7-3 overall record. So they have a few more reps in here. There's now the Pirates. Trying to start this game off hot. Find the net now. Pirates are going to stay patient with that offense that they have. It's a very talented offense. It's been very successful. They've been kind of a, having an up and down season. Inconsistent. Is that shot's going to be a goal? So way to go there for the Mepham Pirates. Start this game off hot. It's exactly what they need. Yeah, a great shot there by Wallatis. Just going in there and just coming right out from up top and just just sw swerving through the defenders and putting that in. Yeah, well, Light is one of the top players on this Mepham Pirates team, one of the top players as well in Nassau County, as you see here. A nice shot. Top right goaltender can't do much about that. Yeah, that's already his 17th goal on the year, and he just has been dominating all year, one of the top players in Nassau County. So we see here now as they get ready for the faceoff. And the, f the left call, a false start as Mepham will be making subs as they'll get the ball. As the Pirates with the ball here, passing it. Mepham looking for something here. So the Pirates, again, you have that nice 1-0 lead here. You got to keep your foot on the gas pedal. As you see, Heller now sends it across. All right, playing with some speed here early on. Big shout out. Heller thought he had the ball there, but did not pass from Nolan. Aronsky, you're going to see him get the ball a lot behind the net there is Liam Williams. Liam with the shot, no good. Good save there by the Tendi. It's going to be a loose ball on the ground. Going to be picked up by Heller. Owen Heller, the D1 commit for UMass, sends it across now. This team playing very patient. As you see here, that makes Heller, you have Walitis, a bunch of talented players here on the attack for the Pirates. Owen oh, Heller now waits, sends it across to Williams. Sends it back now, Henningsen. James Henningsen committed to play lacrosse, D3 at SUNY Plattsburgh. Sends it back to, to Liam Williams. Heller with the shot, it's going to be no good. So good defense there by Jericho. Yeah, just a great job there by Jericho, keeping the Pirates outside, not letting them get a great opportunity. But overall, the right mindset here, right? You're already up by one. The goal is to keep your foot on the gas, continue to try to score some goals, and maybe try to bury this Jericho team early. So you yeah. see here, now the ball behind the net. Liam Williams committed not to play lacrosse, but going to be attending Coastal Carolina next year as he sends it to Owen Heller. Heller taking his time. These Pirates, they're very selective with their shot choice. They have that mindset of, look, we're going to shoot when we want to shoot. There's nothing you can do about it. Pirates now driving. Henningsen to Heller. Heller fakes the shot. Sends it down low. Williams. Oh, he almost had an opportunity there, but the Pirates recover. It's going to be a loose ball and recovered there. Nice job by Jericho. Defense. Ball's going to be loose in front of the net. Who's going to get it? And the ball continues to be loose. So we've seen multiple times here, white jerseys surrounding the ball. They're not able to get full possession. And now they finally are able to, as you have Devin Green. Being patient now. Yes, Klein's looked really strong today in his career. He has over 400 career saves. So Devin Green sends it across now to Heller. Heller, nice pick there set by Willitis. Down to Williams. Back up top now to Green. 
to Heller. You're going to see that combo a lot as well today. Devin Green setting some good picks. Done well now. The Pirates owning the time of possession here early on. You see the ref going to blow his whistle. So just like that, Mepham you see with a really, really good start here. We're talking about a strong, strong five minutes. Yeah, just they're really getting the opportunities. And Blandon Khan's just made tons of big saves. He's fifth in Nassau County in saves. He's a returning all-conference member, already 106 saves and counting, over 400 in his career. He really can bring these guys into a game and keep it close. Yeah, definitely, Jared. Just, you see, of course, right now Jericho's going to have to talk it over with some things not going the way. The defense has been a little strong, but you've seen Mepham. They've gotten a lot of opportunities close up on the net. Of course, they could have capitalized. I mean, we're talking right now, this game could be 2-0, 3-0 if it wasn't for some amazing saves and some good Jericho defense. And right now they've got to find a way to get some offense going. Yeah, and also the Pirates have been able to keep it deep in Jericho's zone, and they've gotten the opportunity. They're really playing it behind the net. And like you said before, just waiting for that shot. They're, ne they're very choosy on their shot. They wait for that perfect opportunity because they know once they have that opportunity, they know how good their shots are, and they know they have a high chance of scoring. Yeah, definitely. And right now, if you're Coach Mulholland, head coach for Jericho, what are you telling those boys right now to try to get them fired up? I'm telling them just keep doing what you're doing. Your defense has been pretty good. You've only given up a couple big opportunities. And just if you get that ball, just run it up that field and just get it out of your own end because that's been one struggle here for Jericho. They have still yet to get a shot on goal four minutes and 40 seconds in to this hat, this quarter. Well said. Is you see Lemus on the other side not tested yet. As now Mepa Velida sends it back behind the net. Now heading set. Up front now, these Pirates. Doing a really good job with time of possession. They're holding the ball. They're making smart decisions right now. Heller. One of the top players this Pirates team has to offer, of course, with being D committed to D1. Is now Williams. Sends it up. Going to fake the shot now, driving. Pirates, and that's not, that ball's not going to go where, where it was intended. But right, the right idea, of course, by Nolan Aronsky trying to drive, get a shot on net. Just didn't work out. A great stick check there by Jericho there. He went for that pass. The pass was there, but Jericho just got a piece of the stick. So now Jericho starting to have some race, some life. Josh Rubin playing with some speed balls in front of the net, and a nice save there. As I said before, they just ran up that field, didn't even worry about making a play, just got it down there, and they got the opportunity. That's just what they have to keep doing. So nice breakaway pass by Matt Biscardi, who's back from injury. As now this Mepham Pirates offense trying to increase this lead to two. Coming up on that six-minute mark here in the first quarter. The Pirates are going to make some substitutions. As you see, Rolaitis is back in the game. Devin Green as well. As you see, there's been a few times where the Pirates have not maybe been the perfect team right now passing the ball. Of course, there is the weather is not, of course, ideal with some wind, and you have a little bit of rain here and there as well. But nonetheless, still doing a good job owning time of possession. Yeah, even on those passes, like it's a slight bounce in front of them, but still those Pirates players are able to get the possession of the ball. So now the Pirates here with the ball around that 20-yard line. Kicks it up top. Aronsky loses it. Good play defensively there by Jericho. Adam Cohen. As Cohen trying to go all the way, but he's not going to be able to. So a good stick right there for Mepham. You see Henningsen doing a good job getting that ball loose. But nonetheless, Jericho, you've seen them. They're starting to play with a little bit more life right now. We saw that speed that Ruben showed earlier right there. Adam Cohen as well trying to get that ball up and, and moving. But right now, Mepham Pirates doing a really good job just making sure that ball stays on the offensive side of the field. Yeah, but I don't know what M Coach Mulholland said in that huddle right there, but it looks like it's going into full effect right now. You saw them come right out of that timeout and go get one big shot there. And that defense has just turned up to a whole new level. So you see now Devin Green kicks it 
to the wing. Willitis sends it back behind the net. Love the ball movement here. The ball movement by the Pirates is going to make sure that Jericho cannot stay, sta stay stable. If they're moving their feet, eventually someone's going to be left wide open. As Helen now with this shot, no good. So just a little wide there, but nonetheless, that's another shot for these Mountain Pirates who have been dominating. Yeah, that was a great opportunity by Heller, but he just couldn't cash in. Maybe even hit the post there as he's going right back at it. So you see here, Devin Green with the shot, and it's going to be no good. A good save. Another big save there by Klein. Green had a nice opportunity from outside, and Klein went down the one knee to make almost like a sliding save there. As it's Pilot's possession now. So, Devin Green here with the ball. Sends it behind the net. It's going to be another good save by Klein. So he's stepping up here. As you saw the replay of the first save, and right there again, the second one. Klein making his presence known. That's going to be a deep pass. Not going who was intended, and a good job jumping that pass as well. So these Meppin Pirates, man, they're playing with some speed, but Jericho an opportunity. Yeah, as Jericho now has possession again, and they're just trying to use their speed, get right in, and worry about it after. As they're waiting and they look to pull it out. So I'm curious here to see how this Jericho offense goes. A lot of the time we see them, they're very freelance, freestyle type of play. They know when they need to shoot that ball. They understand, look, we might not be able to get all the shots, but we're going to make sure that when we do get those opportunities, we're going to make them count. So you see Jericho playing very slow right now, those Jayhawks. Going to take their time. They're trying to slow down the pace here. as The Pirates were trying to use their speed down at the other end and just trying to take control of the game. But now Jericho, full possession. Trying to crash the net, now they play it behind. So those Jayhawks coming in with that 3-3 three three conference record, looking to get a win here against the Pirates. Their last game, they're coming off a 13-7 loss against Long Beach on the 12th, and now they're looking to try to get that game back. Yeah, as there's great speed there by Jericho, looking for the open shot or a pass. Waiting. Plays it back. Jericho. As trying to tie this game up. It's going to be a pass on low. Shot and he scores. So a nice job there showing off the speed. Tyler Chawla there. He, just a great shot there. And he's just really a great finish there. That's normally a specialty. A gr he's a great finisher right around the crease as he picks up another point. That is his 28th. As here's a replay of him just coming right from the 30-yard line and going right in and just bouncing it right through the goalie's legs. Yeah, really a good shot, right? You see the speed there. You saw that nice move that he was able to get to create that opening for him to get a nice shot on that. Kept it low, kept it simple. Nonetheless, that's all he needed to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie game. So you see the two men there for the faceoff. Jericho gets it. You see this team already now starting to play with a little bit more speed there. That ball's going to be sent across. Is this going to be two? It is. So a nice move there. But there is a flag thrown by the ref. I think it's going to be on the contact. It was a physical play and a nice move. But at the end of the day, what can U.S. Lemus to do there, right? I mean, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, very close. So we're going to wait for the ref's call to see if it will stand. But I do think it will. Just a what a change of the game. The Pirates had all the momentum right out of the gate. And then you have Jericho get that first goal. And then after that first goal, they've just built off of that. And they're gaining control and just playing their game. So, in fact, the goal won't stand as of right now. So it was not on the contact. But nonetheless, Jericho, they're still playing with that right intensity, right? So that does get rid of the second goal there for Charlo. But nonetheless... Jericho, you like what you're seeing right now from them. Yeah, They're playing with that intensity. And Jericho is still able to maintain possession as they'll look to keep their aggressiveness. Even though that one didn't count, they still know they scored a goal. And they will build off of that. So, 
those Jayhawks at the end of this first period playing their game. Patient, not going to make those mistakes. Going to do the right things and eventually create those openings. As the ball is going to be sent down low, trying to look for a shot, but not getting it is Chala. Now the ball's up top here to Ruben. Sends it down low to Pearson. Pass is going to be intended for Pearson again. Went a little bit wide, but he's able to recover. Now across to Chala. Chala, the goal scorer here earlier, has one on the day. You also have that brother-brother connection. That's going to be a shot. No good. It's not going to be on net even. But nonetheless, you love the mindset right now by these Shayhawks. They know they have to get balls on net. That is the main thing, right? At the end of the day, what's the worst thing that can happen with you shooting the ball as they're going to retain he possession here? Yeah, as what the Jayhawks are probably going to try and do at some point is just feed the opportunities to Ruben because he is the Nassau County leader in points and he has 35 goals on the season as he looks to build on that. As a great jumping shot there and great save there by Lemus. Yeah, and expect to see these Jayhawks stick to one side. They like to use those left side shots. Like you said, they have those talented players. The Chala, Chala brothers are extremely talented. You have Ruben who is very dominant. So they have those all-star players. It's not trying to put them in the best situation, that best opportunity to score. You also have Spectre on the other side, on the right side, who I expect to get some opportunities here as well. Yeah, as that first goal was by Tyler Chala and on that leaping shot and great save by Lemus, you had Dylan Chala trying to get on the board. So we see here... The Pirates, with not much time remaining in the first quarter, coming up trying to get an opportunity. As we now got 15 seconds here to go, Pirates trying to gain back the momentum that they started this quarter with. As a shot and a good stick check by Jericho. So you saw Lebrano trying to get something going here, but with the clock expiring, we're not going to see another goal for either team. So we end this first quarter at 1-1. One to one. We're even. Yeah, this first quarter definitely started off all pilots, and it was all pilots for like the first five minutes. But after Jericho called that timeout and they got that first opportunity, they turned the defense up to a whole different level. They got their aggressiveness back after that first goal. They even turned it up even higher. Coach Mulholland, really, whatever he said after that first quarter, he's really going to probably try and reiterate that and just say, just play how you played that whole second half of that first quarter. Just keep getting those opportunities. Yeah, definitely. Is You see, those were some of the shots that Klein was tested with early on in that first quarter, and he did a good job. Stepped up to the plate, right? You saw that first shot. Didn't obviously end up how he wanted to with that Mepham early goal, but ever since, he has been lights out. Yeah, he stepped up, and right after he stepped up, he got back to his normal game. The rest of the Jericho team stepped up. Let's, and the Pirates also. That last one, Lemus made that great sliding save. Otherwise, this could have as well been 2-1. to one. And without Karn saves, it could have been 3-4 goals because he had a couple great strict saves. He had that sliding save. He had that other save. Just a lot of good saves by goaltending, and goaltending's really been a huge impact on this game. Yeah, offense wins games, defense wins championships. You hear that saying all the time is, you know, we take a look. Klein has been done a really good job, and then Lemus on the other side as well. And then, of course, how can you not talk about Alessandro Walaitis? He's one of the top players of this Mountain Pirates team, the junior. So this, this Pirates team, they have uh, one more year with him after this season as well, along with Heller and some of those other key pieces that they have. As nonetheless, so they, after review, they are going to count that Jericho goal from earlier as well. So that's going to make it two to one, those Jayhawks. As you saw, Chala did a really good job. He has that second, he has two goals now on the day. Each brother even has one, so the brother effect is going full on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially when you have two kids, you know, two kids that are and extremely the talented. goes out of his crease to play and it almost ends up bad for the Jayhawks. Yeah, but nonetheless, you get out of it, right? That's what it matters. It's, it's in the end of the day, of course. If you're a goaltender, tend the goal. That's what they like to tell you a lot of the times. And Jericho getting away with one there. So the Pirates now, Heller. As you see, they flip sides. That's going to be a goal. 
So a good shot there. It looked like it was deflected by Valenza. Yeah, I mean, the shot by Aronsky, but nonetheless, no matter who scores, the Pirates don't care. It's now evened up. Yeah, but it did look like it was deflected as here's a replay. Yeah, I mean, it was a good shot by Aronsky. Of course, he's not afraid to shoot that ball whenever he needs to. And whether it was contact in front or not, nonetheless, these Pirates, the game's tied up. Now a fresh even. You're technically at 0-0 now. You can forget about, forget about some of the mistakes that you made in that first quarter, trying to you know, start off well here in the second. Well, if that ended up, ends up being Olonsky's goal, it will be his second goal on the year. Yeah, I definitely want to get him going come playoff time. It's now Jericho with possession, trying to answer right back. As you see Dylan Chala taking his time here. 28 points on the season. Chala trying to make a move. Trying to get away around him. He knows to be patient, not to make a mistake. Guarded by Migliaccio. Chala going to send it down. And that pass is going to be intended for Ruben, but he's not going to get it on target. It's now a good play there by Tyler Chala, the brother, to get that ball back. Yeah, the Pirates just couldn't corral that ball there. They struggled to scoop it up, and it almost ended up costing them, but they were luckily able to fend it off for now. So Jericho here. Josh Rubin sends it up top to Chala. Chala to the other Chala. Jericho trying to be more aggressive here, drive towards that net. That's just going to be shot, and it's going to be no good. Good job there. You see Lemus in the right position always. He understands what he needs to do. It's really about positioning. Where are you standing at all times? Make sure that you're in a good position. Take off as much of that net as possible. Give the attacker no angle to shoot. Yeah, but the Jayhawks still keeping the pressure on, even in the 2-2 game. They're keeping their foot on the pedal and just looking great on the offensive end. So now, again, the Jericho team trying to answer after that Meppin Pirates goal. And I like what they're doing, right? It's, a, it's the same thing that the Pirates were doing. The reason why they scored that first goal, the Pirates, they were moving their feet. The defenders had to move. They forced them to possibly maybe forget where their man is or leave someone open. These Jayhawks are now starting to do that as well. And they're also slowing down the tempo of the game, taking their time. And when there's an opening, they're just conserving their energy for that and using their speed when there's an opening so they can weave through the defenders. Yeah, and, and both Weber and Migliaccio doing good jobs up top to stop this Jayhawks team. But still, you see possession here. Jericho trying to wind down this Pirates defense. Make them tired. Continue to make them run. Just driving now. And that's going to be turned over. So you see some miscommunication there for the Jayhawks. But nonetheless, the Pirates now with an opportunity. As Heller sends it. Up front now, these Pirates trying to answer. They had the first time these attackers have seen an opportunity on net since, of course, that goal by Aronsky. Trying to now get the lead back since scoring the first goal of the game. Devin Green is going to fake that shot, try to send it down low. It's going to be a battle. Well, Lightus wins it. Sandro sends it up to Green. Now that ball is going to be back up top. Henningsen sends it down low. The fast shot, and that's going to be no good. So nonetheless, you like the mindset there by Devin Green. Tries getting a good shot on net. It was a nice fast pass as well, but that's going to be no good. Yeah, but Klein was in the right position to maybe even make the save, but the ball never got on net. So now the Jayhawks with an opportunity. We see, I like it. It's a back and forth game right now, right? You're not bored. You're sitting out of your seat. You're waiting, right? Both these teams are multiple times are getting opportunities on net. It's just who is going to capitalize when they get those opportunities. As the goalie's coming out to play it, as he makes a great pass there. Yeah, heck of a pass by Klein. And now that might jumpstart these Jayhawks. Maybe possibly creates a good opportunity. You see the nice rotation. You have Dylan Chala in front of the net. Moving on the other side as well. On the short side, Specter. Waiting for his turn as that ball's behind the net. 
And you also have Lubin there waiting to show off his shot. Yeah, Jingle as well playing a big role in this possession. So now Spectre with the ball, sends it down low. These Jayhawks playing patient. Again, you have the, all the time in the world right now. Make sure you find that right shot, that right opportunity. As Tyler Chala sends it up, and that's going to be a turnover. So nice job there defensively by these Pirates. As now they are going to press the issue. An opportunity here, two on one, and a nice save by Klein. So you saw Williams had a bunch of daylight there in the one-on-one. -on -one. Klein says no. Yeah, that was a great save there by Klein as he's able to just get a stick on and knock it away. So the Pirates here, another opportunity. Of course, Williams wants to try to get that one back if possible. As Green sends it to Heller. Heller now down low to Williams. Sends it to Heller. Back to Williams. A little back and forth game here. Now across, down low to Willitis. Back across now. You see, I like it. They're moving sides constantly, playing fast, moving their feet, trying to find an opportunity. Heller, a nice cut move, and that's going to be off the post. Right off the top corner of that crossbar. He had the net open. But a there nice pass. A deflection therein. That one was definitely by Oronsky, and it Looks like it'll be his third goal of the year, his second of the game, and the Pirates now have a 3-2 lead over the Jayhawks with 6.08 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, what a play. Heller just the no-look pass to Aronsky sitting there in the slot, and he gets that goal. So that makes up, of course, for the Williams play where Klein made that nice save stepping up, and the Pirates, what do they do? They answer right back. Yeah, that ball never even hit the pocket. He just swung it out of midair. And just like he was playing baseball, he just swatted it right out of midair, and the goalie was not ready for that one. So you see Kehoe ready to take the draw. Coming out against Jack Pearson. Pirates doing a good job on draws so far here today. They're going to win another one, but the ref's going to call it. And they're going to say it's Pirates balls. So the clock starts again, and we are underway. For those of you joining us here, the Pirates up 3-2 against Jericho. Owen Heller to Devin Green. Green now down. These Pirates doing a really good job trying to find that open shot, that open opportunity. As Williams. Nice pump big. A little nice go around. Sandro trying to drive. Well, is scores! As it'll be Walaitis' second goal of the game to give the Pirates a 4-2 lead. Quick goals there by the Pirates. Yeah, and you take a look at that replay. Just a nice job there. You put your shoulder down. Nice shot boxing the defender out. And just like that, these Pirates now up 4-2. to two. As now Walaitis on the year has 8 goals and 20 points as he's having a good year, and he's one of the leading scorers on this Pirates team. Yeah, one of these juniors that looking to go to college, play lacrosse, not committed yet. But again, he's displaying his talent there, his offensive ability to make you pay. And these Pirates are turning the game into high gear now, up in the speed of the game, up in the opportunities, really making those passes, and getting really, really good opportunities as the flag is here by the left. Yeah, so we see, you saw Gampero playing with some speed there, but ends up turning it over, and then they're going to call it on Mepham, as you saw a lot of cross check in there, and a few slashes as well, so they eventually got called on one of them. Yeah, as they're just trying to slow down the Jayhawks so they can get that ball back and just turn it into their game right now. Because right now they're playing at a whole different speed on the offensive end right now, the Pirates. They're getting a ton of opportunities, and they're just using speed. They started off slow playing it when it was 2-1 again, making those passes. Now they're just making quick passes and getting those quick opportunities. So we see here the Jayhawks down by two now. They find themselves in a deficit, needing to create something here. 
Falls down low there. Looking for that right shot. Sends it back up top. The Jayhawks going to be a shot and a nice save. But nonetheless, the right mindset there for these Jayhawks. you got to try to find a way to get back in this game here. Only down by two. We're in the second quarter. You have some time. But nonetheless, you don't want to sit. You don't want to be patient. You're trying to get back in this game. Yeah, as Gingold almost had that one. But Lemus able to get down on one knee and make that save. So you saw Savali coming up, committed to Georgia Tech, going to play club there. And then unless you see... The nice shot and a good save by Lehman. And another goal here by the Pirates. This one looks like it will be going to Heller. If so, it'll be Heller's 12th goal on the year. And now the Pirates have a 5-2 lead. As if you look at the time, really, it's three goals for the Pirates. Maybe, maybe like... A short stretch, yeah. Yeah, like... Maybe even four in the last five minutes. They're like all this quarter. His just they're turning in uh, all offense here. They're making good plays on the defensive end, forcing turnovers, and then just going right in transition and getting goals. Yeah, definitely. You look at this Pirates roster. You see Owen Heller's name. I promise you, every single coach is circling it. Not twice, not three times, four times. He's that good of a player. And right there, he finds that opportunity, gets a nice shot on net, and I promise you, one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender, he's not going to miss. Yeah, as he's normally a midi, but he's flexible and is always willing to play everywhere on the field. Great offensively, great defensively. And so even committed to D1 lacrosse at UMass. So now, Heller sends it back down low to Willitis, back to Heller. To Devin Green. As the pass doesn't go where it's intended to. Nice job with the recovery, but the ref's going to blow it dead. So you see Heller there does a good job picking up that pass that was deflected with Green. But the ref's, of course, blowing it dead. Yeah, as the Jayhawks there trying to get a good defensive play, but they ended up getting called for that slash, so it'll be Pirates' ball on the attacking end. Yeah, right? You're trying to find that jump start a little bit. You're, you're starting to stall out right now if you're the Jayhawks. You have a good start here. You, you obviously let up the first goal, but nonetheless now you score two straight, and never since it's been all Pirates. So now Jayhawks trying to find that little spark, trying to get going here. Down three with 3.30 remaining here in the first half. The Jayhawks with an opportunity. See them playing patient here. The ball behind the net now. These Jayhawks going to wait here. You see eventually they'll pick up that tempo. Look for guys like the Chala brothers, Ruben, Pearson, all those guys going to get involved. Try to create an opportunity here. Yeah, the Jayhawks are looking to stop the Pirates route and try and keep them off the board and not let them get a sixth here. And maybe they can sneak up one, and if you're lucky, maybe two here in the final 240. Yeah, and you saw Gampero as well, trying to play with some speed there, trying to challenge, maybe cause a turnover, but good job by the Jayhawks, making sure they make the right decision. So now Pearson with the ball, trying to make a move, get around Savali. Can't do that, though. Sends it to his partner in crime. Josh Rubin sends it down low. These Jayhawks trying to find a way. Create an opening, try to get someone open in that slot for a good opportunity, for a good shot. Pirates still playing good defense right now. They're staying in front of their man, right? You're watching the hips, making sure you don't get fooled on any of these moves. Because, frankly, they're going to let those Jayhawks shoot from the 35-yard line. Because right now the Pirates are content. If they go in a half in a 5-2 game, they're content with it. If they end up getting a 6th, 7th, or anything else, it's a bonus for the Pirates. So that shot's going to go wide, and it's going to be Pirates ball. And nonetheless, you are not pressed for time here. You're trying to play, take this slow a little bit, make sure that you make these right decisions if you're the Pirates. Don't make any dumb mistakes trying to get into halftime, as that's going to be a physical play. As it looks like it'll be a check there, as a very aggressive check there. Yeah, Tyler Chala getting a little too physical. 
as you see tempers flaring just a little bit here but nonetheless good to see that the players are healthy back up and of course you got a minute 44 here left in this half just try to get out of it as we take it's a huge. look at the physical play what a hit nonetheless just you can't do that frankly yeah and Gampillo luckily able to get up on his own power and stay in the game so we see the refs sorting some things out making sure that all these calls are correct. The players understand what's going on. As with a minute 44, the Pilots look ready to go on the attack as they'll probably play with speed. Hey, right, why not try to get another one? It's really now the mindset is let's not make, sh let's not make a mistake. That's really what it is. You can go in the half five to two. You're happy with what you've done here in this first half. But, hey. What's more than five? Six. That's what they're trying to do right now, try to increase this but lead just, to four goals. But just don't get, like, too cute or fancy with it where you end up trying to get that sixth goal and it ends up backfiring and end up turning into a 5-3 game, and you really cost yourself there. So the ref now continues play with the Pirates up 5-2. to two. Well, Lida sends it up top now is Devin Green. Trying to use that left side of the field to their advantage. Have some strong players on either side. As that shot's going to be low, Devin Green, though, no good. Just bounces wide right. Yeah, as it looked like Klein maybe got the edge of his cleat on it with that bounce. But otherwise, he was in the right position. So we see now the ball back up top. A good physical play here by the Jericho, by the Jericho defense. But a good job by Williams to keep that ball with Mepp in possession. That shot's going to be up and good. So a good bounce shot. And it happens to find the top corner. That's going to be a goal. 6-2, your Mepp Pirates. Yeah, as a fabulous bounce shot there. As here's a replay of Williams just going from the 50-yard line and just bouncing it right into the top corner for his 11th goal of the year and 23rd point. Yeah, and the key and the key thing of that, too, is, right, you see there was Heller sitting there waiting for the pass. He thought he was going to get it. Williams with that nice little pump fake, and then he was able to capitalize on this one. Yeah, he's normally just a great passer and very good behind the cage but and making good plays, but right there, he was the play. He made his own play. Yeah, he did a good job creating something there out of nothing. As now these Pirates trying to extend that lead, but a good defensive job by these Jericho Jayhawks. As these Pirates are getting hungry here after getting that sixth goal, they are really feeling themselves looking for seven now and not, not looking to stop at any point. So now, Willitis. Trying to extend this lead again. Is that's going to be no good? And a nice job by Klein to cover that one up. Again, your goal is to defend the crease. You don't want no silly business in the crease. Make sure that ball, you know where it is at all times if you're a goaltender. Is that pass going to be high, but a good adjustment. But there's going to be a slip, and there's a player down. As they will end up calling the check, he might have slipped there, and it might have been a light touch, but still it looked like a check because he slipped. Yeah, it was just an unfortunate play, right? Dylan Charlo, one of those fast players on his feet, just happens to take a fall, and, and there was a stick in the way as he was going down. So it's good to see that he gets up on his own power. But, of course, you never like to see a player hurt. But he'll most likely come out of the game with only 19 seconds till halftime. They'll give him a bully that he's... Talking, getting pats on the back from his teammate, and he's getting helped off, but he'll hopefully for this Jayhawks team, he is a crucial part, and hopefully he'll be able to start this th second half. Yeah, and you also love to see it too, right? We, we see these things as more as sports. Really, these teams are families, right? They're, these are guys that they will, they'll, they're blood, sweat, and tears. Every single season, they're going to war with these guys, so it's good to see that you know the teammates are helping Charlie get up off the field and, and that hopefully he's able to return in this game. As let's see if in these 19 seconds they can score one for Chala, who yeah, was you, sent off. Yeah, you definitely need one here coming up on the 10 second mark. So it's gonna be a loose ball, physical play, and it's gonna go out of bounds. With 5.7 here to go, 
not much time right behind the net. They might try and just feed in front for a quick opportunity. But let's see what the Jayhawks do. Yeah, 5.7 remaining here. Is that pass going to go right through the slot? With no man touching it, we have 0.7. That might be enough time for just the guy who's starting with it to shoot it, but not even that. Or you could just try and get a quick tip in, yeah, but not a lot of time for anything. Well, it's going to be Pirates' fall, likely, so they're just going to get They'll into this half. They'll just hand it to the left and say, that's halftime. And that's the buzzer. 6-2, the Pirates lead over the Jayhawks. But the Pirates started off strong in that first quarter. But then Jericho responded with two. And then the Pirates came out of that after that first quarter, and they got one goal, and then they tied it up, and then goal again, and then goal again, and goal again. That Pirates, they really took control of that second quarter. The first one, after the first one, it was still pretty close, and no team took control. But after they got that goal to put them up 4-2, it really was just three in a row and very short span amount of time. Yeah, you got, you got to be thrilled as well if you're Coach Walsh, right? You know your boys coming in, a rough loss against Garden City, and right now they're coming out firing all cylinders is right there. You saw that goal, but nonetheless, right, they're, they're coming out. They understood the assignment. You, know, you had a rough game against Garden City. You lost 16-3. to It's been a minute since they've played. They had a few days off to kind of get that loss out of their head, get focused on this game. It's one game at a time from here on out, right? Those playoffs are getting closer and closer as we talk, and I understand you still have a few games, but it's never too early to think playoffs, and this Pirates team, a phenomenal first half. Yeah, and Coach Walsh said before the game, we need to shut down the Jayhawks' best guys. And they've literally done that. They've shut down this first half. Josh Rubin, who is the Nassau County points leader with 35 goals and 30 assists. And today, he's not even on the score sheet yet. They've said win faceoffs. They've won the big faceoffs and play good defense and make saves. They've played solid defense, and Lemus has made the saves when he needed to. And the Jayhawks said, limit the unforced errors. They haven't had a lot of them, but they've had a few hiccups in front of their own net that they escaped with. And when the personal matchups, they're doing good with those. But the real key thing for the Jayhawks is they have everybody on the field. Finally, they have a full squad, a healthy team. So it's going to be interesting to see what the coach says coming out of halftime because after that timeout, he said something to inspire them, and he's giving them that speech right now. So I'm really curious how he's going to hype up the Jayhawks, and let's see if they can get an early goal in the second half. Yeah, and right now, I mean, you, you talk about it, right? It was weird because you saw that first goal scored by these Mepham Pirates, and then ever since it was the Jayhawks. They came out with two goals of their own. They did a really good job of firing that, you know, getting that spark, finding it, and then using it, playing with speed, and then ever since it's been all about Pirates. So I'm definitely curious to see what both coaches are going to say to these teams. Yeah, as here's a replay of just that amazing save by Lemus, as he's a big part of this game, and also so is Klein. Both goalies are huge parts of this game as you see coach talking it over with the Jayhawks maybe calling up a play in case they win the face off just trying to set, tell them just play our game just play at our speed if we need to slow down the game you I know they're down by four but if you need to slow it down slow it down as here's a replay of just for lightest, just getting right in, juking the defender, and just flipping it in with a quick shot. Yeah, and that's been the problem with Jericho right now, right? It's just soft on the defensive end. That's really what it is. They're not doing a good job of staying boxed in. They, they, they have their position, right? The whole point is to stay home. You know what you have to guard. You know that area that you're trying to defend. Right now, they're not doing a good job, especially with guys like Willitis, Green, and Heller. They're giving these guys open look, looks. Same with Williams as well. They're giving these guys open looks, hoping that, hey, may, just maybe they won't be able to capitalize, and then we can get that fast break on offense. Not working out too well for them. Yeah, that's what they need to adjust on. Williams took the ball from the 50 and came all the way in and juked out the defenders. Well, Lytus did that. Then 
they scored another one on that behind the back blind pass, which was a deflection. Then they scored the other one, both of Volonsky's. One he tipped in on that one, and the other one he just had a quick release. And Walaitis, he had two good shots, but they defense crumbled in there. So that's what the Jayhawks have to do. They have to get better on the defensive end and get stronger because it all starts with defense here. If they come out with a strong defense, even if they don't win the faceoff and they get a strong defensive stop, that boosts your energy. That boosts your momentum. That takes a little energy and momentum away from the Pirates. But if you're the Pirates, you have to win that faceoff and assert your dominance early in this third quarter. Win that faceoff, come right down, and within maybe the first minute, 30 seconds, minute and a half, you have to get an early goal. If you want to show that you're not going to let the Jayhawks climb back into it fully and you want to show that you're still here, you got to get that goal and make it 7-2, 8-2 even if you want to get a couple quick ones. Yeah, definitely. These Pirates team... They're doing a good job, though. I'm loving what I'm seeing, right? It's the fact that they're not afraid to shoot the ball. They're making sure that they're moving their feet. That's really what it is in the end of the day. In the end of the day. You've got to make sure the guys are moving. If the guys aren't moving, you're not going to score. It's just what it is. You're not going to find those open looks. You're not going to be able to create anything whatsoever. So the fact that they're doing that job of creating, they're doing that good job of finding a rhythm, finding a way to make sure that they can score on these open opportunities, that's really what matters. Well, we thank you guys so much for joining us here for the first half, but we got a nice special interview here on the sideline. Cumin Olympus, Charles, take it away. Thanks for sending it over, guys. I have the fortune of being joined by Pirates head coach Walsh, and I'm just wondering, what do you think it was that allowed the boys to get this 6-2 first half lead? Uh, you know, well, our, our defense and our, our goalie is playing pretty well right now. Our offense has to pick it up a little bit, but uh, defense is playing pretty solid and, and keeping the points off the board for us. Is there anything you want to say for the boys as we head into the second half? Yeah, you know, our offense just needs to start clicking a little better. Okay, uh, we got to complete some passes and just make them move. Coach Mulholland does a really good job on the defense with them, and we just got to capitalize. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's thank send you. it back upstairs. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charles, and thank you, Coach Walsh. We saw there he talked about that good defense that Jericho has, and we haven't really seen it too much today. They're doing a good job at being in the right position at the right time. It's just right now these Pirates have that little extra head, that little extra speed. Yeah, they really do, as it looks like the Pirates will stay with Lemus in net for the second half, as he's looked very good as a junior, so they will still have him next year. And he's, it's a, his third year on varsity, and he's made the big saves. Yeah, and, and right now I'm curious to see what these Jericho adjustments are going to be. We talk about it. They've had some opportunities. I'm just curious to see, are they going to be able to capitalize on these shots? They haven't had many of them. We've seen it's kind of been shot for shot at some times, and then other times we're seeing these intervals, intervals of the Pirates stepping up. They're playing really well. And then you see, oh, my God, the Jericho Jayhawks right now, what are they doing? They're doing a good job moving their feet, getting shots on net. But, of course, the score right now leaning the Mepin Pirates' way. As after that good first half, it looks like, Coach Moholland will make the decision to stay with Klein, with, who is one of the best goalies in Nassau County. Yeah, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, he's had a good first half. I know you talk about the 6-2 to do, six to two score. It's not the best. But at the end of the day, how much is that on the goaltender, right? He's not being put right now in a spot to succeed. We've seen a lot of these goals. They're just one-on-one. -on -one. The guys are in the slot. You saw the lightest goal on the side of the net. I mean, we're talking, what, one to two feet? So you need to put your goaltender in a spot to succeed. That's really what matters in the end of the day. If you're not going to be able to do that, what's the point of having a goaltender? So I'm curious to see what adjustments this team makes defensively. But as well, Klein right now, he is stepping up. He's playing a good game, and he's someone to keep an eye out as well. You're going to make sure that he doesn't get as much action here in the second half if this team wants to come back. Yeah. The Jayhawks really need to have good defense, and now we're going to send it down the Cumulo Nimbus Charles with an interview. All right, thanks for sending it back down here. I'm here with Jericho head coach Mulholland, and I'm just wondering, what do you think it is for the boys that they can do in the second half to carry them back up to the top? Yeah, we're in a battle right now. We just told them they have to weather the storm. Uh, we know we're facing, versing a, a very talented offensive group. Uh, we just have to buckle down and just stick to our our core principles, and I think we'll be all right. Any other words of wisdom or advice you have for them? Just never give up. All right, thank you so much for helping thank out. You. All right, good luck. Thank you, Charles, and thank you, Coach Mulholland. And I love the words buckle 
down. That's exactly what the Jericho team has to do. You hear those words from your head coach saying, look, we know it's going to be a rocky road, but at the end of the day, we're only down by four here, and we got two more quarters to play. Let's go, right? Well, let's. Well, why not try to put your best foot forward, play with some speed, play with some enthusiasm. You know, you're playing the game that you love to play, so I'm curious to see what this team will do, how they come out firing here in the third quarter. And other than buckle down, you also said weather the storm. That storm was basically in that second quarter. In the middle of that second quarter, those four or five minutes was the storm. Those three goals by the Pirates were the storm. If they can weather that and not have to deal with that in the second half, they'll have a high chance of coming back. And also he said never give up, which is something you love to hear from the coach. When your coach is really saying never give up, that, that means nobody will put their heads down. Everyone will keep their heads held high. And also that's what the leaders will do. Those leaders will step in and take control. As we get ready here for the third quarter to start, coming in on 20 seconds and counting here less in halftime. But, no, I mean, you see it, right? He talked about the offensive weapons that this Pirates team has. We've talked about the good defense that Jericho can bring to the table when they are active, when they are staying where they need to be, right? Finding that up in the, the correct spot to be in. But, no, I'm definitely curious to see what adjustments are made. And, and nonetheless, if the Pirates, are they going to keep their foot on the gas or are they going to try to maybe play a more defensive game? Yeah, I think the Pirates, you saw it late even in that second quarter, even when they were up 6-2 going in a half. They wanted more. They didn't want to stop scoring. They love scoring. And that, that's what you, that's what most athletes do. They love when you see that ball go in the back of the net. You love celebrating that goal. So I think they'll keep that foot on the pedal and just score, score, score. So you see the faceoff is underway. We are here in the third quarter. York Meffin Pirates winning this game 6-2 to two against the Jericho Jayhawks. Jericho, though, trying to start this third quarter on the right foot as the flag already coming out of the rest pocket early looks on. Looks like he'll call holding as it looked like one of the Pirates got a grasp on one of the Jayhawks' face masks. Yeah, you can't do that. Is Again, you, you got to see this Jayhawks team play with some speed, play with some intensity. That's what we're looking for. you got to get in those dirty areas right now, right? you got to have a person that's willing to, to, that is not afraid of contact. They're willing to get down close in that slot near that net because, of course, there's going to be white jerseys there ready to put a stick in your way. They're trying to stop you from scoring, so that's what the Jayhawks team needs to do. As here you go now, already only 17 seconds in to this second half, you have a chance in the attacking zone. If you're the Jayhawks here, you have to convert and get a quick one early one here and make it 6-3 and show that those halftime adjustments really have cashed in already. So you see Dylan Chala, of course, now in the game as well after taking that slight fall early, you know, late there in that second quarter. So it's good to see him back out there, one of the dominant players that this Jayhawks team has to offer. As now they send it down low. You see in gold having that ball sends it across again. Now on the other side, Jayhawk, you see them. A nice job trying to, trying to step into that shot, but they're doing a good job being patient. They know that you're going to get that opportunity eventually. Just make sure that you don't mess up before then. Keep your feet moving and create those open spaces. Yeah, as Jericho making those passes and having a full rotation, as they're looking for that play so they can get that first goal and maybe spark a comeback. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to. I also want to see these playmakers evolve, right? You have, you know, you have guys like Josh Rubin where saying that you're the Nassau leader in points that that's not a light thing to say. That holds heavy, heavy value. That is one of your star players as well with those Charlotte brothers. You got to see them involved as that pass in the slot and a good job defensively by the Pirates to stop any shot from going further. As now they're playing with speed the other way now. Good job here. Viscardi sends it across, but a pass. Williams not able to pick it up cleanly as he scoops the ball up, and it's going to be their ball again. But there for the Jayhawks, you saw what you need to see from them. You had Ruben behind the net where he's been most of the game, and he just fed in front. It didn't cash in that time, but if you keep running it, it'll work because those deflection plays or quick shots in front of the net are very hard to stop. So you see now these Pirates trying to increase this lead to seven here, start this third quarter off. With a goal, Henningsen. James Henningsen trying to find an open man. Now sends it to Green. Green sends it down low. 
now back to Green. He's kind of the quarterback of this offense, making sure that he finds that right pass. Does a good job defensively there, but nonetheless, these Pirates pick it up again. Shot with Lightus, no good. So you see there a little contact maybe on that hand, but nonetheless, they're ready to get the shot, and a good job by Klein to be in the right position. As it was nearly a hat trick there by, by Wolaitis, but the Pirates are able to get a goal anyway, and that one will be Henningsen. Yeah, his second of the game, so he's doing some things right now as well. Committed D3 for Plattsburgh, and you see this Pirates offense, they start off right. That's exactly what you need to do. You saw the Wolaitis shot. That's the right mindset. Get that ball on net as much as possible, and then Henningsen doing a good job responding, able to capitalize there, and now your 7-2 to two is the score. As it'll be Henningsen's 14th goal on the year and 16th point. As we're getting underway here as they get ready for the faceoff. So the draw, the Pirates have won majority of the draws today. As the ref's going to blow his whistle. That's going to be Pirates ball. As we wait, and the ref gives you the continuation sign. So the Pirates now doing a really good job here. Up by five with nine remaining here in the third quarter. The Meppin Pirates sends it down to Williams. Liam Williams sends it to Henningsen. Now to the quarterback, Devin Green. Sends it now back up top. These Pirates trying to increase this lead here as they send it back down to Williams. See some other faces active there as that's going to be wide. Shot by Willitis. Well, I just trying to hit a trick shot there, spinning around and just flipping a no looker, trying to go to the top corner, and he just wasn't able to capitalize. Yeah, and you saw Grizzard and Lebrano as well, some new faces there on the attack, getting involved a little bit more. There's a pass by Klein there. It's not going to go to where it needs to, and the Pirates are going to pick it up. So the Pirates maintain possession now here. Good job by Gampero to read that and pick up the loose balls. Now we're Lightus. He's been one of the hot hands, the many of hot hands that this white, that this Mepham Pirates team has. Has been very, very hard to stop. So now Heller and Green leading this offensive opportunity. Sends it now to Heller. He tried picking that up with one hand, not able to, but he recovers it. Owen Heller now sends it back to Aronsky. Orowski, another player that has made a big impact here for the Pirates. As that shot's going to be up and good. So what a shot there by Devin Green. As it's the second time the Pirates have cashed in today on the bounce shots. As it'll be Green's seventh goal of the year. Yeah, the ground's your friend right now, right? You're doing a good job. You're using it to help you with these shots. And we've seen Klein. He's struggling with that stick up high right now. He's doing a good job. He's got good positioning a lot of these times. Just that stick, not where you want it to be sometimes. And, of course, that's definitely a hard shot to defend. Yeah, as here's a replay of Green just going and bouncing that one in. As Coach said, he's always setting everybody up for goals. And when he scores, he makes his own play just like that. And scores all by himself. Yeah, and if you're the Jericho defense, so you got to do a better job, right? You got him. You can't let a man pass you. That's really what it is in the rule of sports. If you have a man pass you, something bad's going to happen. Devin Green using that speed, that quickness, and that, especially that twitchiness that he has, and he brings to this Mountain Pirates team. And right there, bearing his seventh goal of the season. Because already only four minutes and 13 seconds in, you turn the 6-2 game into an 8-2 game. You give two goals in the first four minutes, as the Jayhawks are not having a very strong start out of this first half. Yeah, and it also changes the outlook of this game. That's going to be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and, and he it, scores. And it's Henningsen now with a hat trick. 16 goals on the year now for Henningsen, 18 points on the year, as the D3 is having a fabulous game today. Yeah, hats off to James Henningsen. But, again, you, you can't make those mistakes, right, if you're Jericho. You can't have a guy wide open in front in the slot. That you, was right off the faceoff. They won the faceoff. They pushed forward, and they just set up. Had Henningsen crashed in that, and that took three seconds exactly off the faceoff. Yeah, and we talked about it as well. That 6-2 game that you came into this half with, now a 9-2 game completely changes the outlook, completely changes how you play this if you're Jericho. Because, of course, time not your friend, but nonetheless, you still have a lot of it. As we see another Pirates score again, that is four for Henningsen. As Henningsen having one of his best games of the year, 17 goals now and 19 points as he is just 
piling up that gold title, and he is hyping up this team, and he is hyped. Now, a 10-2 lead for the Pirates. Four goals in the last 34 seconds. It's really great, as that was a replay of just that amazing goal again by Henningsen, as he scores the last two just by himself in the last 17 seconds. Yeah, shout out to Lebron, as well, doing a good job with that nice swim move to then kick it to Henningsen, and then who needs a hat trick when you can have a four-leaf clover? Yeah, and you still have plenty of time, so four might not be the end of him, especially with these two very quick here. He got two in the first half and then two quick ones in the second half. So now you're going to see both these teams talking it over. Of course, Coach Mahalan needs to find a way to get these boys going again. You're down by eight. We've seen crazier things in sports. You have a lot of time here. Seven minutes here in the third quarter. You still have that extra 12 as well in the fourth. You've got to find a way to get these boys going. It's never too late at least in this situation. So you got to get find a way to find that spark, right? This team can play offense. They know how to do it. They have had some good looks today, just the score not reflecting that. Yeah, but even if the Jayhawks aren't able to come out with a win, even in these last 19 minutes left in the game, just get the opportunities. If you're able to pick up two, you're able to pick up two. And just get the opportunities and build it up for your next opponent. And just start working on things that you can do better next game. And especially for the Jayhawks, it's looking like a lot today. Defense. You had Walaitis' goal from two of them. Both from like two feet from the net. You had that one by... You had that one there just again by Henningsen. Both of them were like two feet from the net. They were just not able to keep the Pirates out on the perimeter. And when they are, they're still cashing in with the bounce shots by Williams and Green. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what Jericho now has in store, right? You've got to play with a little more a little, a little more desperate right now, down by eight. You've got to find that spark that... That extra just something to get you guys going, and I'm expecting to see some defenders play a little more up. These attackers willing to take a few more risks when it comes to passing the ball and maybe shooting it as well. As Jericho now playing with speed as they're trying to speed up their game and try and get it inside and set up a play to even get the first goal. So Ruben there with the nice pass down low. See you getting gold. Trying to find a man. He's going to shoot that, and that's... Will go. Yeah, it's going to be a goal. In. So, so right there. What, hey, now's the time to do it, right? You needed a spark. That is your spark. Now you make this game only a seven-goal deficit now. You got to get something going. Gingold gives them that spark. Yeah, as that was a great shot there by Gingold. It almost looked like a pass at some points, but he was able to bounce it through the keeper's legs as a good play there by Gingold. His 18th goal of the year and now 23 points as he's just a great finisher on the – Crease, Coach Mohan said, and right there, that was around the crease, and that was a great finish. Yeah, Jingle, one of the main players for this Jericho team. We've seen him involved in a lot of different plays here today, and hoping to try to give his team a little extra something here. As that's his 18th goal of the season. As Coach also said, he's been a big player. He's a huge part of our offense as he's able to get on the score sheet there on the offensive end, so maybe that'll start something for the Jayhawks. So you see the ref blows his whistle. The time continues, and these Pirates now with the ball. Devin Green, one of the many Pirates here that has goal in this game. As they now send it across the Pirates. Time is on their side. Is Heller with the ball. Owen Heller. Playing patient. Let's see what he does. A nice pass to Aronsky. Aronsky to Green. Green with the shot. And a nice save there by Klein. Yeah, and that right there, even though the Pirates were able to get a pretty good shot off, that is something you'd like to have your goalie having. Those shots right there, that is something you want Klein having. Those perimeter shots that he can see with no screen that are almost a routine save for these goalies. If you keep that up, you'd be very happy if you're the Jayhawks if you do not let the Pirates get on the inside and keep them outside on the perimeter. So now that shot is going to be deflected off a stick 
but a good job recovering behind the nets. Now these Jayhawks still have possession here. You score one goal, let's, why not try to get another here within a minute? As they all put in the pressure on and they are looking a lot better on those two timeouts that Coach Mulholland has used. They've looked like a different team coming out of those timeouts. This one they got a goal out of. The last one they got a goal out of. No, they got two goals out of. So those timeouts have been very profitable for Coach Mulholland. So you saw there Charlie trying to get that ball and trying to get something going. You saw some physical play there with the sticks. But nonetheless, a good job there by the Pirates. You're staying composed. You see that this Jayhawks team is trying to play with some speed, trying to get an opportunity to get back into this game here with five remaining in the third. And a good job just trying to stay composed. Keep your feet. Watch for know where your man is. As the ball is behind the net now. Jingle. Trying to find someone up top possibly. No, he's going to run around. A nice pass to the slot. And that's going to be off the, the top crossbar. That's just frustrating if you're this Jayhawks team trying to get something going here. That's obviously not what you want to have. Right off the center as that was Lubin. He could not have hit that crossbar any more dead on right in the middle. Nearly had his 36th goal right there. So the Jayhawks now an opportunity to still get another one on the board here. Let's see if they're able to capitalize. As Ruben sends it down. Now the ball's behind the net. Spectre. Trying to get around. Trying to find something here. But a nice pressure, good defense. And a good arm save there by the Pirates. Weem is there, able to get an arm on it and just knock it away with his elbow pad as that could have been a great opportunity for the Jayhawks if they had a guy on the doorstep. Yeah, and good job by Aronsky as well, keeping up the pressure along with the rest of this Pirates defense, not giving the Jayhawks too much time to think. These fast decisions can cause into some mental errors, and you're seeing that here with some of the passes that are going wide. Yeah, but the Jayhawks, still, you now have like, and there the, it is, they are able to pick up a goal. As I was going to say, they've had very strong zone time and right on cue. Jack Poston with his 17th goal of the year and 35th point. And here's a replay of him Poston just out on the perimeter and just right through Lemus's legs as it's now a 10-4 game as two goals recently and the last two by the Jayhawks as they're starting to find something. And you see a man down there. For the Pirates, nonetheless, Pearson doing a good job scoring his 17th goal of the season, but you always hope for the pl for the health here. Lacrosse being a very physical sport, and you never like to see players hurt. We saw Chala hurt earlier in the game as he's surrounded by jerseys from both teams. Good to see good sportsmanship shown. Yeah, as Coach Mulholland said before this game, that Poston who scored right there, he's just a do-it-all guy. He never wants to come off the field. He always locks up the best opponents, and he is a huge offensive threat, as he was able to get that goal there. Yeah, and you see they're flexing the hamstring out, likely something in the leg, and you can tell the player's still in good spirits, waving, waving to the trainer, but nonetheless, hopefully he's able to hopefully walk off on his own two feet, on his own power, and as we wait with the stoppage in play. Yeah, as the Jayhawks are getting stuff done, even without Ruben getting fully involved, he might have gotten a, he almost got his goal. He might have one or two assists, but he almost got that one goal. So to do it without basically one of your best players getting on that score sheet is pretty impressive. So if Ruben can get on track, and already these last two by the Jayhawks with other guys, this could be a game changer. If they can get it to 10-5 even, or 10-6 maybe, and go down four or five goals and turn what was a 10-2 game in 10-6, uh, that's great for the Jayhawks. Yeah, it definitely changes the outcome of that fourth quarter. You change the way you play. You change the way that you maybe run some certain types of schemes and whatever it is, right? It changes the outcome. It changes what you're going to tell your team when you have an opportunity to talk to them. Obviously, this Jayhawks team, they have to have all foot on the gas, right? You don't have time to sit back, relax, and, and maybe wait for that opportunity to come to you. As you see, the claps, happy that we are able to get Savali on his own two feet again. Walking off on his own power as well, so that's big, 
to see whether it was cramps or whatever really it was. It's good to see that the talented weapon defender hopefully can take a small break. Yeah, but the thing is, with these Jayhawks getting these last few goals, the Pirates have been a little passive on the offensive end with that 10-2 lead and even 10-3. But giving up those last two goals, they might go back to the offensive end and start firing again and could end up picking up a couple goals. So the ball here at the 50-yard line. The Pirates here up by six, but Jericho doing a good job. Scoring two unanswered here. As Jericho Jake. with the ball again. You see Pearson trying to find something here. They scored the last goal here for Jericho. Trying to do so again. As he has Spectre open. But he will take his time. Trying to use that speed he has. Nice spin move. Reverse spin now. See some physical play with the sticks. Is now a nice recovery here. Jay the Jayhawks with the ball again. Chala, a nice move there. Making a man miss. Trying to make a few. Is that pass going to be attended down low? But not able to do so. You saw good defense there by Willitis. Maximo, the brother of Alessandro, is now Heller going the other way. That's going to be an open opportunity. And that's going to be a goal. As so it looks like it'll be... Nonetheless, a good opportunity by the Pirates. They had multiple players up front. You saw Heller trying to play with speed. You had uh, you had Willitis in front of the net, Williams, as well as Henningsen. So a good opportunity there. Just packing the crease as it was Williams able to cash in there with his second goal of the game and now 12 on the year to give the Pirates a seven-goal lead again, 11-4. to four. So now the Pirates doing a good job. You see the Jericho Jayhawks, they get two unanswered goals. And what's a better thing to do than obviously get one of your own again? So that'll push the lead now. We had we talked about how it was possibly if you can get it down to five, that deficit maybe to four here by the end of this third quarter. You're set up pretty well to try to make a comeback, but the Pirates trying to make sure that does not happen. Devin Green, one of the many hot hands for this Pirates team. A good save by Klein. Green going back to that nice shot, that bounce shot off the turf. As now Jericho trying to pick up the pace here. That ball around the 40-yard line. Good job recovering by Chala. Chala has an open man. He hits him. The shot, and it's going to be a goal. So a good job there to respond. We're seeing a nice as shot for shot as Josh Rubin with the goal. Yeah, as Rubin there now with his first goal of the game. Nearly had one before, but now 36 goals in the year for Rubin. 66 points. He's third in Nassau County in goals as he was a replay as he was able to just escape the two Pirates defenders and get in on a breakaway and a perfect pass there by the Jayhawks. Yeah, and I talked about it earlier, right, with the goaltender. It's all about angles. You put, you have to put yourself in the best spot so when the shooter looks at you, they're looking at you and they're looking at the net, that they have the least amount of room to shoot at. Josh Rubin doing a good job finding that bottom left corner. That was clearly the vulnerable spot there at the time for Lemus, and he does a good job to score. So Jericho gets that goal right back. They're down six here with 2.23 and counting. In the third, is, you see some contact there. Heller's going to get called. You see some frustration. But the Jayhawks, a glaring opportunity. Yeah, as that goal there reignited the Jayhawks after giving up that one before they were able to get it right back and make it a six-goal game. So you see... Some changes for both teams. This Pirates defense has been strong all day. And they're going to look to continue that. The Jayhawks, though, trying to find a way to fight back into this game. It wasn't going to be pretty. Coach Mulholland knew that, obviously, when they were down eight. And they're doing a good job now. Just continuing to fight back slowly here. Down by six. The Jayhawks. Knocking on the door. Can they do it here? That ball back at the, the the front. Spectre sends it down low. Now it's behind the net. Jingold up front now. Ruben. Making sure he doesn't make any mistakes. Josh Ruben, one of the best players on this team, has a few goals here today. And a nice save by Lemus. So a good job blocking off any angles the shooter has. Does a good job. Sticks in the right position and an easy save. So we see some physicality there at the 40-yard line, but the play continues as Jericho with the ball. The ref's going to blow it. 
as you saw some physicality there between Jack Pearson and Jack Weber. So the ref decides to blow it dead, but nonetheless, Jericho doing a good job trying to fight back in this game. They had an opportunity like we saw before with Ruben, but a good save by Lemus. He's the backbone of this Pirates team. They have a good uh, goalie tandem between Lemus and Dylan Hunterkamp as well that they like to use. That's going to be something that's very key for this Pirates team, of course, today and throughout the playoffs, right? You're going to ride the hot hand with the goaltending matchup that they have, and both these goalies are ready to step in whenever they need to. Yeah, as it'll be Pilot's ball here as they look to attack and get that next goal and or just maintain possession. So the Pirates, up by six here, sends it to Green. Devin Green had a few shots on net today and some goals. Liam Williams now sends it across again, down low now. Willitis sends it back around to Williams, back up top. Trying to get a shot off, chooses not to. Willitis sends it to Green. Now a shot possibly in the slot, trying to move up. Liam Williams going to shoot it. And a good save by Klein. So you see there's some nice ball movement. Nonetheless, you have Heller, Willitis, Aronsky, Green, Williams all involved in that play. But a good job by Klein. Cuts off the angle and a nice save. Yeah, as the Pilots did get the opportunity, but Klein was able to make a great save. The Jayhawks looked to go back the other way and try and get another goal. So good job defensively stepping up, stopping the pass. Now the Pirates an opportunity here on the other end, and you're going to see a physical play by Klein, but the ball ends up going past, and they don't get punished for it. And you take a look at the nice shot by Liam Williams, but a good save by Klein, you also saw the good play defensively there for the Pirates that really sparked that entire play. But like I said, Klein not having a bad game despite the 11 goals allowed. He just has not been put in the ideal situation to succeed. No, but when he was actually able and the defense helped him out and he was put in like the ideal situation, he was able to come up and make those big saves. So now Jericho. Trying to get one here before the end of the quarter. It's going to be a shot, and it's going to just bounce a little too high to get on net. Right mindset, though, by the Jayhawks with 2.4 remaining. If you're trying to find a way to crawl back in this game. You wanted to get one more here. But going down, going to end up likely here with one last opportunity. They're not going to score. So down six now going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, the Jayhawks, the defense, they gave up five goals in that quarter, but the, even though the defense still improved, they were able to keep shots out on the perimeter and let Klein just see the shot so he actually had a shot at saving it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've seen both these goaltenders have been really good today. And we knew coming into this game that was going to be one of the key things, right? Lemus has been really good all season. He's been very consistent. You know what you're going to get out of the guy, right? And then on the other side, Klein has really stepped up to that name of being one of the best goaltenders here in Nassau County in Long Island, right? We knew that these two that these two goaltenders were going to step up. They were going to play their best game. And right now, Mepham getting the best of it. Yeah, as the Pirates also, their defense there in that quarter, they let the Jayhawks get some get a couple goals, and they made the good opportunity. So the J Jayhawks' offense did step up there. They did have a couple big goals there, and they there were bright spots. They had the two consecutive goals, but then the Pirates got one, but then the Jayhawks got another one. So they did show bright spots as we're getting set up here and getting ready to start this fourth quarter. Yeah, as you see, both teams will change sides. Jericho trying to find that spark, trying to flip that switch, right? That's really what you need. Down six, it's possible, right? It's doable. They're definitely not out of this game, but you got to start now. You can't wait to get all these goals when there's, you know, I don't know, three, four minutes left. You got to start early. You got to set that tone early. We've seen some physicality in this game, but Jericho needs to find that one. Once they find one goal here, you got to start to build on it, right? You can't go shot for shot right now with the Pirates. You're not going to win that battle. You got to make sure that you stay consistent. You find those open looks, and you have to capitalize now. They've give them, give the, they have given themselves no room for error. Yeah, so, as 
Kehoe's getting ready for the faceoffs. He's won a lot of them today. Yeah, he's done a really good job. The brother of Kieran Kehoe is now the Pirates get possession here, and they're going to take their sweet time. You see Walitis, one of the many, many talented players on this Meppin Pirates team, just making sure that he doesn't make the wrong decision. The pass must go where it needs to. You can't give these Jayhawks any opportunity to come back into this game. Walitis trying to use that shoulder, fight for leverage. The nice half spin sends it to green as they're going to take their time. Pass a little high, but on target to Weber. Jack Weber sends it back to Green, the senior. Devin Green, nice pick there by Willitis, and that's going to be a goal. So a good shot there by Devin Green. I can't quite tell if maybe Klein didn't have an, an exact idea of where it was. He looked as if he was slightly screened, but there was no one really in front of the net. You saw Willitis as well with the good pick and just a disgusting shot there by Devin Green. Yeah, just a perfect Top corner snipe there by Green as he now has a multi-goal game as the Pirates go up 12-5. to five. Yeah, no celebration needed as well. He knew that he meant to put that ball where it was, and he made sure that that thing was going to go damn near bar down. So a good job there by Devin Green to bring this lead to seven. The Pirates can smell an opportunity to get back at 500 in conference play. Doing a good job. They've played really well since that loss against Garden City. Trying to erase that out of their minds here. As the Pirates have possession here yet again. Willitis sends it up top. The Pirates know that the time is on their side. There's no pressure. Is now Malloy. Sends it across now to the other side. You see Lebrano trying to find something. That's going to be a loose ball. As who comes away with it, the Pirates do. Henningsen, a good job there down low to find that loose ball, picks it up. As the Pirates now still trying to waste some more time, score some more goals, and build on this lead. As you see, Jericho now the other way. The time is now. Jericho, what can they do? As you see there, multiple white jerseys surrounding Sam's, but a good job to fight it. Jericho, you have no room for error, like we said. Coming down into this quarter, down by six, and then with that nice goal there by Devin Green, down by seven, you have to get at least, what, three or four goals here before that five-minute mark to really have a good chance to come back in this game. Yeah, as they're going more on the attack here, they're getting opportunity. They're looking to get the opportunities, but the Pirates are just keeping them on the perimeter and not letting them get too good of an opportunity. So now... Both coaches, an opportunity to talk to their teams here. As you know, the Jericho, they're going to have to come out swinging, right? You have nothing to lose at this point. Look for them to get very aggressive. They're going to make some risky passes. You know Klein's not going to be afraid to come out of that net, try to get that ball back as fast as possible as well. These defenders not going to be afraid to step up, try to make a play. Yeah, but also the Pirates, they've got – they are going to go on the attack. They are not going to be afraid. Even though they're up seven, they're still going to shoot, shoot, and shoot. And they'll look to score. So now the players will take the field yet again here. 10-11 remaining for those of you that are joining us now. Mepham Pirates up 12-5. to five. It's been Mepham for majority of the day. We saw that first goal scored by the Pirates. Then Jericho, two unanswered. And then ever since, it's been the, your Mepham Pirates that have really had their foot on the gas this entire day. Yeah, as we're coming out of the timeout here, and it'll be Jayhawks' ball. Yeah, you have to find an opportunity now. You have to score. Time is of the essence here. As expect them to play with as much speed as they possibly can. Look for their star players to get involved here. You see Tyler Chala. Having a good day today. As they're going to need him a bunch with all the other superstars on this team to try to mount a comeback. As Ruben T'Challa. T'Challa trying to make a move. Can he do it? A nice job there on the stutter step as he sends it back behind the net. As you see, an opportunity here for Jericho, and it's going to be no good. So you saw the nice sneaky move there. 
by Spectre, but nonetheless not able to score on it. As now the Pirates have the ball. What a good pass. Now sends it up. Jericho doing a good job getting that ball back. They know that they need to get at least a few fast goals on the board here. Doing a good job picking up the tempo here as Ruben. What a pass. That pass is going to be just a little high there for Pearson. But again, you like the mindset. Obviously, you can't have those mental mistakes, right? You can't miss those passes. But I like it that they realize, hey, look, we're down. We have nothing to lose. Why not try to get some shots on net, create some opportunities? As the Pirates look to go back on the attack and pick up goal number 13. So the Pirates know that they can take their time here. Is bringing the ball up for the Pirates. They've done a good job on the day passing as well. They're not making many turnovers. They're doing a good job. The ball's getting from point A to point B. And then eventually finds that open net. You're, you're seeing it multiple times here for these Pirates. It's now Jericho with the ball. Sam's trying to make a move. Sends it to the goalkeeper. Now the ball is up again. Pearson. As he's going to take a fall there. Ball's going to be loose. Good defense by Savali. As they're going to call it, though. So a little too physical on the play. But you like the speed that, that this Jericho team's playing with. Yeah, Jericho is playing with a lot of speed, but almost too much speed for their own good. They're, they're getting knocked down a lot, and they're spending a lot of time on the ground instead of on their feet. Yeah, well said, Jared. It is. We wait for the ref signal here to resume play. Jericho needs an opportunity here with 8.16 remaining. Right, and you're also trying to split these goals up into two, right? You have that, you're at, you're coming at near that eight minute mark. If you can get at least three, maybe four goals here by that four minute mark, you're sitting not necessarily pretty, but in a good spot to mount a comeback. Is they're gonna have a glaring opportunity here and just wide right. You saw the frustration there on Charles' face, a glaring opportunity, but a good position by Lemus. We talked about it. He does a really good job. He's aggressive in his crease. He steps up, he stops any angles for the attackers to shoot at as that shot wide right. Jericho, though, an opportunity to respond here again. Ruben sends it down. Gingold sends it across. As you see the Pirates now, aggressive play there. The ref's going to throw his flag out. That's going to be on the contact. So, of course, Jericho trying to find something, get going there. Nick Gampero is going to get called there, the physical play, and as the player is down here for Jericho. Yeah, but Jericho getting very aggressive, and the Pirates' defense is also getting aggressive, just trying to not let Jericho get any goals because they've seen what happens when Jericho gets one goal. They've gotten multiple in a row, and they can go through streaks. Yeah, and I don't even know. I mean, Gampero obviously came in flying, right? He was playing. He's one of the faster players on this Pirates team, and I don't really know if he really gave the player an opportunity to see him coming, right? He didn't really get a chance to brace for the impact, so we, of course, hope that Jao's okay, but... Nonetheless, the Pirates who you see on the bench taking a knee. But again, it was a physical play. We talked about it before. Lacrosse is a very much a contact sport, right? You're aware that when you sign up for this game, there are going to be physical times where you're going to have to put your shoulder down. But nonetheless, good to see that you see the teammates congratulating Zhao. Happy that he's able to get up on his own two feet. Hopefully can walk it off. as we have 7.37 remaining in the game. Yeah, as within these next two minutes, Jericho's gonna need a couple goals to really get back in this. To have a shot at a comeback. So you see, Coach Ball's taking his time, talking to his players, understanding the situation here. And you see two very different approaches, right? Coach Mulholland's talking to his players on the field, right? He's making sure that they know what they have to do as he's also talking to the ref. But then these Pirates, they have that close huddle, just trying to get that message across. They know the situation, right? You're up by seven. It's no mistakes from here on out. Do not give Jericho any daylight. 
and just play your game, right? That's what they've been doing all day. Their offense really speaks for itself. It's overwhelming at a certain point. So just keep that up. Keep that aggressive play, but also controlled chaos. That's what we really have to see from these Pirates. So the players from Mepham now will take the field as we are getting ready to be underway again. The refs gives him the signal as time resumes here. Jericho, Ruben sends it down to Jingold. Now an opportunity at the side of the net, no shot. Sends it back up front. Ruben sends it across. As you see a little slip and fall there and he's gonna lose the ball there. Is Lou an opportunity but just takes a fall as the ref's gonna blow his whistle. And it's gonna be Jericho ball. So Ruben now going the other way to Pearson. To the side of the net, that's going to be a shot. Good save by Lemus. I don't know if that hit off his stick or maybe even his leg, but nonetheless, good job getting in front of it to keep this lead at seven. Yeah, as he was a wee play of the good opportunity, and it was a kick save yeah, by nice Lemus. Put his shoe in front of it. So there you go. It's just being at the right place at the right time. Good positioning. It speaks for itself. Is that's going to be a goal. So Ruben... A disgusting shot. You saw the nice slot of the stick as well. On the, he kind of sh shot that with his sidearm and then just right through the legs of Lemus. That was an unbelievable shot. As he has a lead play of just a nasty shot by, Le by Ruben to get it by Lemus. And now Ruben's got two on the day and just keeps on building his points as he's on his way to 70 points as the Nassau County leader. Yeah, Lemus as well kind of holding you know, his head a little bit because that was a really good shot. I also don't know if he saw that all the way, right? I mean, that was a really hard shot, especially those low ones too. Possibly with you have a bunch of jerseys in front of you, so definitely not the easiest save there for Lemus. But he's been lights out almost all day. But Ruben, of course, making his impact felt here in the fourth quarter. So that's a start here, but you got to keep it going if you're Jericho. Can't, no room for mistakes. This is the physical play by Jericho. What a hit there is they're going to have an opportunity to go the other way now. Playing with speed. Now on the wing. Is that going to be a missed pass? Can he get there in time? Ruben trying to play with some speed. Not able to get there. But nonetheless, physical play there. Jack Schroeder steps up, lays a hit. Yeah, just a big hit there. Yeah, him and Pearson making their presence known. You saw Pearson steps up. Good job, lowering the shoulder, it's legal, right? We talked about how lacrosse is a contact sport. You're gonna have opportunities like that to lay out a nice hit on your on the other man and just a good job, textbook, plays with some speed, gets up in the other way. But no goal to show for it here for Jericho. Yeah, as the pilots are looking hungry now, look, wanting to get that goal back that they gave up. So now Heller. Knows the situation. He's aware that there's coming up just under six minutes here remaining in the game. Going to take his time. No mistakes. That's all it's about. Owen Heller. Just waiting. He has two jerseys on, two men on him now. As Jericho knows, they have to try to get possession back. As Heller is going to be the opportunity. A good save by Klein. As another player is down so you saw the physical contact Heller trying to drive towards the net and when you start double teaming some players you start trying to get your stick in the way it leads to altercations like that yeah just a great play there by Heller and another save by Klein he's made a lot of saves even though he's given up 12 he saved plenty of shots so the man down there for Jericho is Adam Cohen as he's able to get off the field on his own power, which you love to see. Now five and a half here to go. Pirates 12, Jayhawks 6. So the ref will give us the signal as it's going to be Jericho's ball. As Jack Schroeder going to have an opportunity here. As in fact, they're actually going to make a change so Jericho putting in new personnel now. As again, you want to get your top players involved here. There's Jack Pearson. We've said his name a lot. He's definitely made a big impact on this game. Passes it 
to Klein. There's another ball. Jericho starting to try to advance it here as Wang. And a nice play there defensively is now well, Light is trying to play with some speed, and that's just, that pass just going to go a little bit wide. He had the two-on-one there and just a little over Williams' head. Otherwise, he might have had goal number 13. Yeah, you saw Willitis and Henningsen. Nice play there defensively to get the possession back. And then the two-on-one by Willitis just a little too high there on the pass. And you don't see those two off often. Normally, they're on the same page and just, again, the pass a little high. So Jericho down six. What can they do here? Just under five minutes remaining. As you see, a nice job defensively by these Pirates. The ball is loose. Who will scoop it up? As the ref blows his whistle, it looked to be under a body or two there. So the Pirates still nonetheless a good job. They know where to put that stick, right? It's all about stick positioning in this situation. Make sure that obviously you can't slash the player, but you can use some stick-on-stick -stick contact, create some of those loose ball opportunities, and the Pirates have done a really good job of that today. And they've also won a lot of the 50-50 battles that we've seen. There's been a lot of loose balls. And all the time, really, it's been these Pirates coming out away with possession. Yeah, as the Pirates with the ball now, ready to go on the attack. So we wait for the ref signal. Liam is going to start with the ball here. It's still likely make... A simple pass here, and he will. So Biscardi with the ball, sends it up. Aronsky, a nice move here. Takes what the defender gives him. Ruben, try to get an opportunity there. You saw the nice play there, trying to get that ball loose from Aronsky, and then a good save by Klein. So good defensive job there by the player Ruben. Now he has the ball going the other way. Ruben, a nice pass. There's Chala bringing it in. Slowly creeping up around that net. He's going to take his time, go behind. Is now Jingle. Sends it up. Ruben fakes that shot. Even stepped into it. But he's patient. Wraps around now. Heller guarding him. Sends it down low. The shot and a nice save by Lemus. So a good job there. Read, the, read the, the shot well. Sticks up in the right position. Now the Pirates playing with some speed going the other way. The Mountain Pirates, good job stopping. Taking their time, Weber. Showing off some of his offensive abilities. As now these Pirates taking their time. Slowing Three and the a game half. down. Three and a half left, and the Pirates are slowing down the play. Just with that six-goal lead, just trying to kill as much time as they can and just pass it around. So the ball now behind the net in a safe spot for the Pirates. As they are aware of the time and of the score. As that shot's going to be shot and scored. So Devin Green going an old reliable off the turf. And that is yet another goal for the Pirates. As it's now 13-6 Pirates and Green now has a hat trick. So he's the second Pirate on the day to get a hat trick. That's a nice bounce shot there. As Henningsen has four, he has three, and Willardis has two. As he's looking for a hat trick also with 3.05 left. Yeah, Devin Green, one of the best players on this Pirates team as well as one of the best teammates, right? He's got that big outgoing personality and you love to see it. And it's also one of those guys that when, when someone likes that scores, right? The guy that you're going to practice with, you're seeing him every day. When he scores, it just makes you happy. It makes you feel good. As these Pirates now really pushing away here. Up 13-6 to six now, extending that lead to 7. Three minutes to go as the Jayhawks just looking for something to try and get some end the game on a good note at least. As the Jayhawks trying to get it off the perimeter and get past the Pirates defense. Yeah, so the Jayhawks, the time is now trying to get something at least, maybe some momentum in the next week as Lemus with a good save. So not able to quite get it in the netting, but a good job nonetheless to put a stick in the right position as the ref's going to make a call. Now it's going to be Jayhawks ball again. So Ruben has a few shots on net today, but not much to show for it. He has that one goal earlier here to give that Jericho team their sixth goal. 
as they're trying to get the ball down low. They do so behind the net now. Nice shot there. Spectre not able to get a shot on net, a physical play. The ref's going to use that whistle. But again, you like the mindset, right? You're not willing. You know, you have to be willing to go near that slot. You know you're going to get hit in that area, right? You know there are going to be players that are going to use their sticks. You're going to get hit. You're going to get, you know, you're going to have to be willing to take some of those, some, some of that contact to score a goal. It's now the Pirates going to go the other way and an easy save there. Just under two minutes remaining here in the game. Jericho trying to find some momentum. Crossing that midway point now. Sends it to Jingold. Now to Ruben. Ruben in the end zone. Waiting. Tries to make a move. Nice stutter step. But it's going to have to spin back around. He doesn't want to go that way. As she's using that elite speed that he has, sends it in front in the slot. A nice save by Lemus. What a job there. Reads the play like a book. So the Pirates going the other way. With an opportunity, Liam Williams. The ball in the other end zone. Taking his time here. So the Pirates will get the much-needed win the, today after the rough game against Garden City to push this conference record back to 500. Jericho going to need to go back to the drawing board, focus on this next game, try to get something going. Yeah, as now 40 seconds to go, and the Pirates just holding it and letting the time run, making those slow passes and just slowing down the tempo a lot. Yeah, they're, both teams here are just going to kind of wait out these last... 25 seconds and counting. We'll see if there's another shot on net here, possibly. But the Pirates get the job done here at home. It's exactly what you need, right? Defend the territory. They do so. Jericho is going to have to hit the road. And I'm curious, right? These playoff games, you know, these are kind of these playoff atmosphere games, right? Your midway point of the season, these games matter. You're going to look back at this game and be like, man. I wish I did this better. I wish that we were able to come out with this game, with this win. These are important as we get closer and closer to those playoffs as you see the nice goalie hug there. Hunter Camp and Lemus celebrating as both teams will greet their goalies. But again, this was a game that we knew coming in was going to be hard for both teams. Mepham, that hot shot offense. Jericho, that shut down defense. Who would prevail? The Pirates able to get the win here, 13-6. Yeah, and even in this high-scoring game, 13-6, to six, those goaltenders really both played a fabulous game each. They all both had a couple of highlight reel saves. Lemus had some in that final minute. Lemus had another one earlier. Klein had those big ones in front of the net to Stonewall. Lemus had the ones to really stop star player. Josh Rubin, he gave up two goals to him, but one was on a nasty release and the other one was just a nice yeah. shot. And considering the fact as well, like you have those guys, you have the Trello brothers, you have Rubin. These are guys that are not used to just a two-goal game, right? You know they're going to make their presence felt. felt. And this game, frankly, they did not get the success that they were hoping for. They, those three combined for only four goals, and the Trello brothers had the two in the first quarter, and then Ruben had two in the second half. So after that first half, the Chaga brothers really did not have that much of an impact. And Ruben didn't have much of an impact in the first half, but he stepped up in the second half. So when you're winning games and you're the Jericho Jayhawks, when you're at your best is where those guys are consistently just putting up the goals and getting all the points all around the board and working together and all getting points. Yeah, and you know what? This isn't it for these Jericho Jayhawks. They, this team is built for a run. I promised you that. This is one of those teams that if you let them get in the playoffs, they have that star power, right? They have those superstars in the Charles Brothers, Ruben. You have the other Pierces as well. Jack Pearson made his name, you know, made his presence felt today. He was, in, he was involved in a lot of plays on both sides of the field. So this is one of those teams that if they can get in the playoffs, they can find an opportunity here. They're one of the teams that might be the Cinderella story, right? They might be able to make a run. They, they have the great defense, right? Obviously not the best showing today. They have that franchise kind of goaltender in a sense here. 
They have the pieces. Right now it's just about kind of putting those pieces together and seeing if everything can unfold in front of their eyes. Yeah, just with all those veterans, a ton of all-conference players on this team, especially the goalie himself, just plenty of star power on this team, and they could be very scary. For If you go into the playoffs, you may see the record like, oh, yeah, it's Jericho. They have not that great of a record, but when you look at actually and go down the roster, you'll see all that star power, all that all-conference, all that goal scoring, especially Josh Rubin, who if you're going to beat Jericho in the playoffs, you're going to need to shut down him and the Chicago Brothers. Yeah, definitely. They, they, you know, We talked about the matchups in both these teams. Both teams have a lot of superstars. And here is a superstar himself, the B- your B&B player of the game, James Hennessy. Charles, take it away. Thanks for sending it over, guys. I'm joined by the BNB player of the game, James Henging Singh. Absolutely wonderful play tonight. First of all, let's read the room. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. Big win, uh, big conference win. And uh, just uh, shout out to the whole team, the whole defense, yeah. the, the goalies, the faceoff guys, the whole offense. Just did great. Excellent. Is there any strategy you went into tonight with going uh, into your play? Just getting a good night's rest. That's about it. Perfect advice. All right, thank you so much, James. All right, All right let's send it back right. upstairs. Thank you, Charles. As we talk about Henningsen, one of the star players on this team, he made his presence felt today. But sadly, folks, that's all we have for you here. Thank you so much for tuning in. But hey, don't worry. We got a game here tomorrow. Is your BMCH SD Chargers? We'll take on a very talented team. I'm very excited for that one. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've been Tyler Steinberg alongside my partner, Jared Broxmeyer. Goodbye and good night.